Hey everybody, Seville here, and today we're going to be doing Game Zone from Try Hack Me. Looks like a pretty fun box. It is a part of the uh, OSCP uh, learning paths, so I figured um, I'd go ahead and do that. I was going to do Hack Park, but I feel like it'd probably be best to do Game Zone, Skynet, and then maybe Hack Park. And uh, so I figured we'd go ahead and start with this one. Uh, let's get a quick read on this. It says, learn to hack into this machine, understand how to use SQL map, crack some passwords, reveal services using a reverse SSH tunnel, and escalate your privileges to root. So, pretty cool stuff. I think I will be learning a lot. I've only used SQL map once or twice before, so this will be pretty interesting. As you can see, I've already deployed the machine, and we are ready for task one. I just went ahead and completed um, this little part right here where it says deploy the machine because it was, you know, no answer needed, and it's it's a freebie, so... Let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, this room will cover SQLI, which is just SQL injection, exploiting this vulnerability manually and via SQL map. So that's pretty interesting. It's uh, similar to the uh, Steel Mountain where we use Metasploit and then we did it manually. Um, let's see, cracking a user's hash pa hashed password, using SSH tunnels to reveal a hidden service and using a Metasploit payload to gain root privileges. So pretty cool. Well, now that uh, we've read through that, we can go ahead and just skip on to number two since number one is good to go. And the question is, what is the name of the large car, uh, cartoon avatar holding a sniper on the forum? So we can go ahead and head over to this IP address. And we know that uh, it's just going to be this IP address because obviously, uh, co or commonly, web servers are either on port 80, which is just HTTP, or uh, port 443, which is HTTPS. But uh, we'll just go here. Since we haven't run the in-map scan, I'm only pointing that out because of such. And now we see... Um, Hitman. I don't actually know his name, sad to say. I wonder if I can get that by just going to the page source. And let's see. That's the that's the, for the thumbnail. I actually don't know Hitman's name. I'm probably going to get grilled for that. I certainly apologize for that too. So let's see. What's a Hitman Hitman's name? I don't really, you know, I don't, I didn't really follow it that much. So let's see. Hitman is a stealth. Well, that's not agent 47. I'm going to get grilled for that agent 47. That should be our answer there because he is in fact the guy, was he holding a sniper? Oh, he was holding a sniper. Okay. I thought it was a pistol for some reason. Um, all right. So that's, that was pretty straightforward. We get the, um, we're on the HTTP site, which is more than likely port 80, and it's just the game forum. So that's looks like we have a, a login page here. We can register, not registered yet, um, and I'm assuming we'll be either uh, using SQLI here on the user login, or maybe somewhere in the site search or something to get some type of like um, LFI, local file inclusion, or who knows, uh, directory traversal. I don't know. Maybe it spits out like a, the database. And let's go ahead and move on to task two. So obtain access via SQLI. And in this task, you will understand more about SQL, structured query language, and how you can potentially manipulate queries to communicate with the database. SQL is a standard language for sorting, editing, and retrieving in databases. A query can look like so. And so it says select everything basically from users where username equals, then it gives you a pretty solid uh, query command. In our game zone machine, when you attempt to log in, it will take your inputted values from your username and password, then insert them directly into the query above. If the query finds data, you'll be allowed to log in. Otherwise, it will display an error message. Here is a potential place of here is a potential place of vulnerability. As you can input your username as another SQL query, this will take the query this will take the query right place and, ex and execute it. I'm sorry, that kind of got me. It's a, it is a little early in the morning though, so. I just haven't woken up all the way, that's all. All right, so we can complete that. There's a freebie for us. Let's use what we learned above to manipulate the query and log in without any legitimate credentials. If we have our username as admin and our password as, um, basically this is the this is a um, SQLI command, it will insert this into the query and, uh, and authenticate our session. Uh, the SQL query that now gets executed on the web server is as follows, and it shows you the actual full query that is basically ran when we just do this in the uh, user login area. And I, I've had to use SQLI before, and I usually do something like uh, SQLI login credentials, and there 
is this really good site. I'm pretty sure it's, is it this one? It is this one. It just gives you almost everything you'll need right here. And it also gives you the SQL query that you'd be running as well, which is really good. It's a really good cheat sheet. So let's go back to that. And it says uh, the extra SQL we inputted as our password. I hope I'm not uh, making anybody cringe by saying SQL, not like SQL or something like that. The extra SQL we inputted as our password has changed the above query to break the initial query and proceed with the admin user. If one uh, is equal to one, basically that's what that means with the uh, double uh, equal sign, then comment the rest of the query to stop it breaking. So let's go ahead and enter that into our login and password and we should be able to enter. And now we are in the game zone portal. Pretty cool. And I'm just making sure it didn't say that we need to do anything when we get in the portal and it doesn't just kind of explains um, the, the full query that was basically sent. And then we can just go ahead and get that freebie as well. So GameZone doesn't have an admin user in the database. However, you can still log in without knowing any credentials using the inputted password data we used in the previous question. Use what we just used above. I don't really know how to um, say that out exactly <laughs> as your username and leave the password blank. When you've logged in, what page do you, uh, do you get redirected to? Well, I use both. I don't think it matters. We can definitely see real quick. So let's, let's go back and, okay, yeah. So it, it doesn't look like it really matters if you use it in just one or you use it in both. It's gonna let you through anyways. But we see that we're redi redirected to portal.php. So we can go ahead and submit that. And we are done with task two. And then we can head over to uh, task three, which is looking, which looks like we're gonna be using uh, SQL map which is a really cool tool. Uh, it's already in Kali Linux. Um, we can maybe get a manual page on that. We can. So you can see it's just an automatic SQL injection tool. It kind of does all the work for you. And um, if, you, if you don't know how to do uh, SQL injections manually, this would probably be the go-to. This is definitely my go-to. So definitely worth uh, looking into if you haven't already or if you have never used it, I would definitely um, well, matter of fact, you should just try this room out because you'll be using it there and then you'll learn how to do it manually. So that's a win-win right there. So let's get let's get into task three, using SQL map. SQL map is a popular open source automatic SQL injection database takeover tool, um, as we just read in the uh, man pages of Kali. Uh, this comes pre-installed on all versions of Kali Linux, as we know now, or can be manually downloaded and installed here. So that's perfect if you're not, if you don't have Kali or maybe you have a uh, custom installation of Kali and didn't get uh, SQL map, you can uh, just use that link and get it there. There are many different types of SQL injection, Boolean, time-based, etc. And SQL, SQL map automates the whole process trying different techniques, which is really cool. Um, it doesn't like show you everything, but it kind of shows you the steps sometimes. And it's, it's pretty cool to see it just kind of going through all of its uh, processes. And so let's get into question number one. We're going to use SQL map to dump the entire entire database for game zone using the page we logged into earlier we're going uh we're going to point sql map see try hack me it always tries me it always it always tries me and sometimes it wins and sometimes i catch it and I, i'd like to give this one a tie because i kind of caught it but i kept going but we're going to point sql map to the game review search feature first we need to intercept the request made to the search feature using burp suite so uh, i hope i updated it pretty sure i have should be good there and let's um while we're here i actually haven't um created a directory for game zone so let's get into our try hack me directory and make a game up oh, dang it burp let's make a game zone we'll just call it game zone like that no uh nothing crazy perfect because we may be saving some stuff here shortly i don't know but i want to be prepared when we do so Let's go ahead and we're just gonna do a temporary project and then use burp defaults. If you haven't done burp or if you've never used, if you haven't done burp, if you haven't used burp, there is actually a burp room in uh, Try Hack Me that kind of gives you an idea of like the little fundamentals of the program. I would definitely recommend it. Maybe I might even do something over it. I uh, am slightly I would say I'm comfortable with burp. I'm not like an expert. I don't have like the paid version or the um, 
enterprise version, whichever, whatever they call that. Um, but I don't have that. I know a lot of like bounty, uh, bounty hunters use that bug hunters, bounty hunters. I'm thinking of a uh, cowboy bebop. I know a lot of bug, bug bounty hunters. They, uh, they use burp. Um, and they, you know, they can tell you all about it. I, I know as much as I need to, to be dangerous. And that's about it. So let's see, we got burp going. It is good. Um, in order to get that, we need to go ahead and let's see. First, we need to intercept the request page made to the search feature. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Is it for portal? Okay, it is for portal. Okay, so in order for us to do that, um, we would just need to turn our uh, proxy on so that way we can load, uh, we can intercept it in burp and we just make sure our intercept is on and it is and we can just make a, uh, a call out uh, thanks for watching and you can see it uh, that burp intercepted the request and I'm pretty sure it just said that we needed to save it to a text file save this request into a text file we can pass this into SQL map to use our authenticated user session so we can save let's see is there a certain way to do that no, save item and we want to save it into our game zone directory. Good thing we set that up. It's going to be called a request.txt. Save was successful. And now we are going to be using SQL map to, um, to use an authenticated user session. And it looks like we're going to just make a call out. SQL map will try, will now try different methods and identify the, uh, the ones that See, it got me again. SQL map will now try different methods and identify the one that's vulnerable. Okay, maybe it didn't get me. Maybe I just got myself. Eventually, it will output the database. It's, it's still early. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go with the, the fact that it's still early. So now we just need to use SQL map on the uh, intercept request that we just um, that we just intercepted and just run these uh, run these flags here. So it looks like we're going to be using a uh, dash R, which uses the intercepted request you saved earlier. So our request.txt that we just saved through burp. And then we're going to be doing dash dash uh, DBMS. It tells SQL map that what type of database management system it is. And then we're going to do uh, a dump, which attempts to output the entire database. So let's go ahead and get that going. We should see... Um, request.txt it is there we're going to go ahead and call sql map i hope i don't have to use sudo but we're going to go with it anyways request.txt we're going to be doing we're going to be telling it what um uh, management system it is it is my sql i know that because it said it in the uh example there we haven't done we still haven't done an in-map scan i guess it's not necessary for this box so um we just kind of have to go off that information maybe um i should go to burp here Say by chance. It doesn't it doesn't say, but maybe it it, uh, it has already told us before. The remaining test. Do you want to include all tests for MySQL extended provider level one? We'll go ahead and put yes, and it will begin to uh, run its uh, processes, and we should get some information here in just a moment. In the users table, what is the hashed password? So, looks like we're probably going to get a password here shortly. Let me just see if, um, did it tell us that it was a, dun, dun. I think it told us if it was, okay, it hasn't told us that was MySQL, at least it, it didn't find it, so, I don't know, um, I, I guess we're just, um, they're just kind of giving us that as a freebie, which is fine. And let's see if that has done anything. It hasn't. Uh, post parameter search item is vulnerable. Do you want to keep testing the others? Um, sure. We're just going to give yes to everything and just see everything it kind of hits back at us with. Uh, yep. Yep. Oh, what dictionary do you want to use? Um, I should have actually read that. Uh, we'll just, we're actually going to just give it the same one. SQL map data uh, txt word list dot tx just hit enter cool. uh, do you want to use common password suffixes no just go ahead and give it 
that. Don't see anything to uh for I mean I'm not I'm looking for that hash password. This is this looks to be the uh that front page with the thumbnails. Um writing hashes to a temporary file. Okay. No clear passwords. And there is our hash password. I just had to scroll down just a tad. And the username is actually agent47. That's pretty cool. So it looks like that is going to be the answer for um, question. Uh, this was that question one. So question one is going to be our hash password. And I can actually turn off um, our proxy. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to uh, input the answer here. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, that hash password here. We're going to go ahead and submit that. And that is the correct answer. What was the username associated with the hash password? We saw that next to the database um, that it leaked, it was agent 47. You can see right here, username and password. It just leaked um, the users table from the database. And the database name is actually DB. So uh, from the DB database, it leaked the table users and just outputted the username and password, but uh, the password is in a hash format. So what was the other table? What was the other table name? Uh, let's see. Wonder if they think they're looking for. Let's see. Oh, post. We can see that right there. You can see that uh, same same database name, different uh, different table name uh, than users, and this is just uh, the post from that front page. We can go there real quick and just. You know, you can see, uh, well, hold on now. This might not be it. Those, those don't look like the, I don't know where those posts are. Um, let's see, one of them is called, uh, all right, Hitman 2. Let's, let's search Hitman 2. We can click around maybe. There we go. Here are our posts. So you can see that that is in the um, that is in that database uh, database table here. All that information was right here in these posts. And we can move on to task four because task two is complete. We've uh, we've completely dumped the database for our users and posts. Even though we already had access to posts and that post information didn't have uh, much of information for us anyways. Sorry about that, I had to get a quick sip of water real quick. And on to task four. So cracking a password password with John the Ripper. Uh, John the Ripper, or JTR, is a fast, free, and open source password cracker. This is also pre-installed on all Kali Linux machines. Uh, really cool. I believe there is a paid version as well. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure there is. We'll use this program to crack the hash we obtained earlier. John the Ripper is 15 years old, and other programs such as Hashcat are one of the several other cracking programs out there. I'm more familiar with Hashcat, um, only because of like Hack the Box and stuff. It, you know, you, you can get a lot of stuff done through Hashcat, and that's usually like the uh, intended way to go through it. So, um, but John the Ripper is still just as good, and it's really fun. I, I'm pretty sure it has a GUI as well. I haven't used it in like I don't know, maybe two years. So this program works by taking a word list, uh, hashing it with specified algorithm algorithms, and then comparing it to your hashed password. If both if both hash passwords are the same, it means it has found it. You cannot reverse a hash, so it needs to be done by comparing hashes. And it says if you're using a lower powered laptop, you can deploy a high spec Kali Linux machine to try hack me. They are so uh, graceful of that. Thank you very much, try hack me. Once you have the John the Ripper installed, you can run it against your hash using the following arguments. And then it just says, um, obviously we need to um, save that hash to a file. And then it gives us a word list we're just using Rock U, which is standard on most Kali machines. If you haven't um, unzipped it yet, then you just go through to this uh, share here on your computer and then just unzip it and you, you'll have rockyou.txt. And then it tells us the format and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and copy. I think I've already copied it. Let's just make sure I haven't. Let's copy that hash, put it into a text file. So we're going to. Um, Clear this, vi, and then we'll do um, hash.txt. 
save that. And we're good to go. We can now use John in order to crack this hash. So let's do John to call the program. Hash.txt is our um, hash, our password hash. And now we want to specify the word list, the dash dash word list, and then equals user share word list. Again, it's not going to. Maybe I need sudo just in case. Split. It's not auto completed for me. I don't know why. Okay, word list rocky.txt and then the format equals. And it's going to be raw SHA 256. 256. SHA 256. Slow down. All right. And we'll hit enter there. We'll enter the password. And it will go through, and you can see that it cracked it fairly fast for the password video gamer one two four, which we can take that and put that into well, that is going to be our password for agent forty seven. So what we can do is we can um, credentials txt, and then it's um, agent forty seven, and then our password, which is video gamer one twenty four. We can save that and we can cat credentials and we see we have the password for agent 47 now and it's going to ask what is that dhash password it is video gamer 124 we'll take our freebie as well and now that we have the password try sshing try sshing that's a funny way to say that into onto the machine what is the user flag so let's go ahead and ssh um, as agent 47 at 10 10 4 should then ask uh, if we want to uh, continue connecting. Of course we do. It's going to ask for the password. We have that. Video Gamer 124. And we are now in as uh, in the game zone box as Agent 47. So we can see where we're at. We are in his home folder. So we can CD to the desktop. Oh, there isn't it. Where are we? Oh, we're just here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, cat user.txt. And we have the user flag now. So we can go ahead and take that and submit it and we are done with task four. So now we are going to be exposing services with reverse SSH tunnels. So cool. Let's see, reverse SSH port forwarding specifies that the given port on the remote server host is to be forwarded to the given host and port on the local side. Dash L is a local tunnel, you, uh, it's, yeah, from the, from, you to the, uh, from the client to you. If a site was blocked, you can Forward the traffic to a server you own and view it. For example, if Imgur was blocked at work, you can do ssh-l uh, to port 9000, imgur.com. Let's see. I hope I'm saying that right. Going to localhost 9000 on your machine will load Imgur traffic using your other server. Okay, so this is specifying the port that we're going to be using, and this is the port that uh, our server would be on using the other server. Dash R is a remote tunnel. So from us to the to the client, you forward we yeah, we're forwarding our traffic to the other server for others to to view. Okay. So this Oh, okay. We are forwarding our traffic to a server that so that we can view it. It just, you know, it just takes a minute sometimes. That's all it is. You know, you just gotta read it through, take it slow, don't assume it, and uh, it'll all come to you. I've actually used SSH uh, port tunneling very recently for the first time, honestly, through, um, I can't even think of that box. I think it's actually an active box right now, so I don't think I'm actually allowed to show it, at least my notes for it. I'm, I can't think about what it was called. So it's a Windows, it's a Windows machine on Hack the Box. It is a medium level. I could, it, it, I know it's medium level. It is a Windows box for sure. And it's on Hack the Box, and it's active right now to this day. I'll probably um, I'll probably put a card up on which which box that is. I don't know. But anyways, we're going to be doing um, reverse SSH tunnels. It gives us an idea of what that is. I um, massacred the explanation of that, and I apologize. But basically, the dash L, um, it can forward the traffic to a server you own and view it. And it gives us an example of that. And then the dash R is a remote tunnel, which is um, forwarding our traffic or you know my traffic to the other server for others to view. So it's just you know this in reverse. R dash R is this in reverse, and that's all that is. So 
We will use a tool called SS to investigate so uh, sockets running on a host. If we run SS-TULPN, uh, which it gives us a description of all of those flags, it will tell us what socket connections are running. So how many TCP sockets are running? We'll just run this uh, command here. So uh, SS-TULPN. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven. Uh, well, we have seven full sockets. We only have uh, five TCP sockets. And that would be our answer because they just want the TCP sockets. We can see that a service running on port 10,000 is blocked via a firewall from the outside. We can see this from the IP table list. However, using an, using an SSH channel, we can expose the port to us locally. And we see it there. All right. And um, so from our local machine, run SSH-L. OK, OK. Once complete in your, uh, in your browser, type localhost uh, 10,000, and you can access the newly exposed web server. What is the name of the exposed CMS? OK, so let's go ahead and run this command here. We'll just copy this since it's already here. And I don't need to do shift control, uh, control shift C, because this is not a terminal. copy that come on you can do it you can do it so all right we got it so let's go ahead and exit this clear ssh dash l oh wait we don't have to do that because we copied it and it's agent 47 at uh, 10 10 248 4 and I didn't copy the password thm oh wrong thing game zone and then um, cat credentials copy that and paste it and now we're in so uh, now that we've used the dash L which is um, forwarding the traffic to a server that we can uh, that we own and, and can view we can now go ahead and type localhost 10,000 And we should be able to see the web server now. And there it is. So log into webmin. That would be the exposed CMS. And what is the CMS version? The version is. Let's see if we have. What is the name of the exposed? Let's see. We can view page source and see if we get some version numbers here dun, 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 dun. I wonder if we get do we just log in with agent 47 well let me make sure I have okay I do agent 47 does this work for for us here and it does okay I should have just tried that to begin with but you know you know how it is I got to be got to be difficult just in case it wants to be difficult from the jump so I'm assuming, let's see, system information. Oh, there's our webman version, 1.580. That would be our answer there. And we can move on to our last and final task here, since we have the uh, CMS version. And task five is complete. We are on the very last, which is privilege escalation with Metasploit. So using the CMS da uh, dashboard version, you use Metasploit to find a payload to execute against the machine. If you are inexperienced with Metasploit, complete the Metasploit room first. That's pretty cool. They have like a room for almost every, um, you know, program that you would almost need. Use the CMS dashboard version, use Metasploit to find a payload to execute against the machine. Okay. Let's do Webmin 1.580. Let's search that and see if we find some information on uh, maybe a CVE. And I will assume that Rapid7 will show us exactly what we need. And it looks like use um, exploit Unix webmin, webmin show CGI exec. What does this do exactly? This module exploits an arbitrary command execution vulnerability. Uh, the vulnerability exists in the file show. That gives us RCE, which would almost be what we would need almost let's just make sure that there isn't anything else um, 
we don't really need that anymore, but we'll just keep it running. Webmin 1.580 exploit and just look around. So there's another, there's the other RCE. Now it looks like it's going to be the one thing we need. So let's go ahead and get that started. Let me go ahead and get a new tab going. We'll start Metasploit up real quick. And I believe that's the only thing we have to do. So yeah, we just need to run Metasploit and then get our root flag. So from here we should get uh, root.txt. That didn't take long. Let me copy the exploit we are going to be using. It's going to be exploit Unix web app webmin show CGI exec. So let's copy that. I did it right this time. I did not press the shift key. And we'll use this. And then we'll clear that. Show options. Let's see what we need to put in. Um, the webmin password was video game 124 or video gamer 124. And we can get that straight from here. So set password, video gamer 124. Set our host is going to be our IP address of the machine, which is 10.10.248.4. 10.10.248.4. Port is 10,000, so that's good. And then set username to agent 47. And we should be able to exploit. Authentication failed. How so? Show options. Video gamer 124. Video gamer 124. Um, dun, dun, dun. Target port. The target port is 10,000. 10.10.248. That is our 10.10.248.4. That is our IP address. Proxy chain format. Let's see what we're let's see what, what I'm up against real quick show targets set targets let's look at the uh, exploit DB version see if it has any extra comments or anything mm hmm okay so I moved along a little bit and I just kept on reading because I kept on failing at this um, at this exploit here and I don't know exactly what I'm doing wrong and um, I noticed something. So the module exploits an arbitrary command execution vulnerability in Webmin. I mean, you, you, we've already read this. But there's an interesting piece here. The vulnerability exists in the file-show CGI component and allows an authenticated user with access to the file manager module to execute arbitrary commands with root privileges. Don't think I, I read that properly the first time. We see file manager here. If I click it, uh, okay, so it looks like I just my my uh, browser just doesn't support Java. However, I should be able to file. Is it files? Just file. So file show CGI. No such file or directory. Failed to open because there's no such file or directory. So we should be able to do something like root, or oh yeah, well yeah, we could do root root.txt, and boom, there is our. Oh, that's the I I keep hitting that shift uh, shift key when I'm trying to copy that, like I'm in the terminal. There is our root flag right there without the use of Metasploit, which is pretty cool. Um, we can submit that and see that that is in fact correct, and we've completed the room. But let's see, like we could do something else as well now that we have uh, basically we have full full control of the box through here, and we could do something like uh, EDC password. And then we could see, oh, not password, going crazy. We could do um, shadow. And we can see all the users on the on the machine. Plus, we can get the hash for this as well. And I wonder if we can actually use this. And let's see, that would be. Again, take, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Switch over, clear, cat, or not very similar to the one we have here, which would make sense because it's not in the uh, database, but uh, no issues there. We could technically, we could take this down and try to crack it as well to get the root uh, password. 
but uh, we have RCE as root basically because of what it says here because we are uh, executing arbitrary commands with root privileges because we you know we've already uh, we've authenticated it's a it's a vulnerability that allows authenticated users because we are authenticated as agent 47 and we have access to the file manager we can make these commands as root so um, no need for a metasploit however I should probably look into why mine wasn't working or, or you know not why it wasn't working but what I was doing wrong uh, to maybe get it to work I'll have to look into that and uh, maybe add something to the end of this video but I won't waste too much of your time I certainly appreciate you all watching this and uh, hopefully learning something with me today and I apologize for it going on a little longer than I expected to but again I certainly appreciate it if you have any questions please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to answer them you all have a wonderful day see you again bye hey everybody several back for one more extra thing here I realized what I did wrong when editing this video uh, I realized what I did wrong in the metasploit portion of the privilege escalation and I'm gonna go over that now uh, I've redeployed the machine it's uh, it's about like an hour or two later uh, after um, editing like I said editing the video and then I just I just was just watching over it and I said oh my gosh I have to go back I have to record it. I can't just let it be and so here we are I've redeployed the machine as you can see we're about uh, 12 minutes into the deployment of it and I haven't set up the exploit completely yet but that's okay, we can do it right now. So set password. We know the password is video gamer 124. Uh, 124. Set username. We know what the username is agent 47. And we want to set the R host to local host. And why do we want to do that? Because in task five, we created a local tunnel. Because then we forward the traffic to a server that we own and can view right here we did that here and I did not realize that when I was setting up the exploit and I was using the IP address of uh, the, the previous deployment when I was recording the video as the target and that is not the case the case is that we have to target ourselves in this case the local host so let's show these options and we have just about everything right we can set SSL to false and we should now be able to um, exploit Started reverse TCP, so it's attempting to log in. And we should get a successful uh, a successful message here. Let's see, I don't think everything looks fine. Authentication failed. And then it, okay, and then, it, then now it's successful, so we're, oh wait. Exploit completed, but no session was created. Well, what did I do wrong here? Let's see, you are buying to a loopback address by setting L host to. Dun, dun, dun. So the authentication was sec successful. Uh, show options. Set local host. Set L host to 10.8.13.197. Show options. Now. Now let's exploit. Now that it's actually gonna. Now that the um, listeners on our try hack me IP it should go through now. We'll just give it an extra second. But yes, that was that was that hurt me so much while I was watching that video. I could have had a hundred percent video there if I had just remembered uh, task five which was only a single task ago, task ago from reading this. And I just, it just completely, it went in and went out and I completely forgot it. And we can see that it went through successfully. I guess, uh, I don't know why, but it, it didn't add my uh, 10, 8, 13, 197, which is fine. The IP for uh, try hack me VPN. And you can see that the session was created in the background. So we can sessions dash I one, because that is the number of the session. And we can do a who am I and we can see that we are now root on the machine we can CD over to the root directory and then cat the root.txt and there is the root flag and we can confirm that by just going down to task 6 
and seeing it right there for us that is in fact the same one and we are good to go so metasploit was not in the wrong as i already knew but ah oh, that hurt me so much but i really wanted to get this recorded and put this in the video so that um we could have you know all of it there and i really wanted to apologize for wasting just a little bit more of your time however i am super thankful that you took the time to watch this video as always have a great day goodbye